Commentary Booth is a show for media lovers by media lovers just like you. If you want to support the show, go to pariomagazine.com.au. <clears throat> Welcome to the Commentary Booth, where we watch, and you guessed it, commentate on the week that was in movies and TV. I'm your host and play-by-play -play commentator, Jamie Apps, and each week I'm joined by a rotating cast of colour commentators to help you find your next viewing treat. This week I'm joined by an accountant who lists her favourite movie as Top Gun and favourite TV show as Suits. Welcome to the show, Adam Laser Tag. There you go, Laser Tag, I haven't had that one before. Yeah, well, obviously based on Top Gun we had to come up with some, some nice call signs. Nice call signs? What's your call sign? I don't know, you don't choose your own call sign, someone else chooses that for you. Apps daddy. Good. <laughs> nice and just quick and easy roll off the tongue in the middle of an intense dogfight. Yep. Apps daddy, take my wing. Perfect. <laughs> God. Uh, so what have you been up to recently? Obviously darts and beer by the looks of that. Darts, a little bit of beer. Finally got around to seeing Top Gun, which was took much too long to actually go and see. Yes, we were both yeah. a little bit late on that, but well worth the wait. Yeah, definitely worth the wait. So yeah, back a lot this, of my childhood. Yep. Yeah, this week we're gonna head into the danger zone and also dunk on some fools with our reviews of Top Gun Maverick and Adam Sandler's new movie Hustle. We'll we'll start with Top Gun since we're already on the topic. What did you sort of overall top level think of the movie um i thought it was really good from a like top level perspective a little bit worried that a sequel can kill such an iconic movie but i think they did such a good job of keeping up with the old themes and bringing back the right amount of flashbacks without being too corny and bringing in a new storyline i thought it was really good yeah definitely like it didn't feel like obviously it came 30 years after the original but it doesn't feel like they're just cashing in on the name like it yeah. felt like it as as a standalone movie by itself it would have still stood up even if you were a massive top gun fan yeah, yeah i think even if you didn't see the original top gun the throwbacks made sense there wasn't anything that was out of place that you're just like <laughs> why was that in it other than maybe great balls of fire probably most people wouldn't have been um <laughs> really got that if they hadn't seen the original but uh yeah no, i think it was really good but yeah like even the throwbacks that were there they weren't throwbacks where you needed to know what it was referring yeah. to like it was just there for if you're a top gun fan you you get it you understand yeah. it if not it still makes sense yeah definitely and what yeah you? like what was your biggest takeaway I was stoked. Like, like I said, I don't think it felt like it, a cash in and I actually think it, it probably exceeds the first one just because it has, it felt like I had a bit more of a fleshed out story. Like with this one, the whole story builds to that climactic moment. Whereas in the first one, it kind of builds up to Goose's death. And then I always just forget everything that happens after Goose dies. Yeah. Yeah. It was sort of two sort of different segments in the first one yeah. yeah this one yeah like i re-watched the original one before i went away for my holiday and yeah i i remembered every moment up until goose's death and then that happens and then i'm like i can't remember what happens from here on the first one for me is still just about playing with the boys beach volleyball scene nothing better that made my childhood that's all <laughs> all i thought i was gonna do when i was older just play beach volleyball in your jeans. Yeah. yeah, and be shredded, but it didn't happen for some reason. Yeah, beers. That was the, that was the issue. <laughs> Definitely. Be beers and children. Yeah, no, um, like some of the throwbacks as well, where it was sort of like when Hangman was the one that was at the start calling Tom Cruise the old guy and that in the pub. Yeah. And then it's, he walks in as the instructor, like the reverse sort of. I, mean, I thought that was a cool little moment. Yeah, it, like it, they did a great job of echoing the original. Like we had, yeah. we had dog fighting football this time instead of yes. beach volleyball, which was kind of the same scene. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah, the the, inst- the student being a, a jerk to the instructor and then realizing, oh, I've I've put myself in a bad position from the very get go of this course. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tom Cruise returning in the iconic role. How do you think he he stood up? Did he still capture the Maverick vibes? I think definitely. Like just, I don't know, for such a, well, 30 years apart, you wouldn't think he looked 30 years apart. He still looks fit, still looks like he fits in that Navy persona. Um, Yeah, no, I just think he kept that Maverick vibe going very well. Yeah, especially because I think he's what, 58 or something now like he's he's getting up there sure (laughs) and i think that makes him like if this was canon would make him the oldest fighter pilot of all time sort of again pushing the boundaries that maverick loves to do yeah uh and then obviously they introduce or reintroduce val kilmer as ice man that was such a great moment i was so glad that they got him into this movie given his yeah. health issues of yeah. recent years. I think the way they did it, that still allowed him to have that little part, have a voice as well. I think that was just uh, really well done. It wasn't corny feeling like they're just trying to plug someone in. Um, and I think it's the bits with the first movie in that he would have been the one that progresses up the ranks in. Yeah, definitely. Maybe where... Maverick was never going to be the one that's going to do anything more than fly planes and get in trouble. Yep. And they did a great job of sort of playing on how in the first one, those two started as rivals, but by the end had a mutual respect and Iceman is sort of continuing that now. Uh, Something I did learn after we watched it though, that um, because of Val Kilmer's throat cancer issues, he actually can't talk. So all yeah, of the, it was all, it was all like AI voice and I wouldn't have picked up on that watching it. No, no, I thought like they had some sort of machine or something that did it, but yeah. Yeah. It's all AI voice based on recordings from all his old movies. Wow. So that was pretty cool. And I think like, you know, he, he looked good in the movie, like obviously makeup and the like does a lot for it, but he's had some pretty rough photos go around in the last few years. And I think he looked very nice in the movie. It was a little part that he played. Yeah. Like I'm glad they didn't try and wedge him in and have him in yeah. the movie heaps more. Like they just got him for that one little bit and it was felt fitting and felt perfect that way. Of the, the new cast of characters, how did you feel they all fit in? Obviously we had Miles Teller as Rooster. Bradley Bradshaw, Rooster, the son of Goose. Uh, who else did we have? Uh, John Hamm as the, the Vice Admiral. Glenn Powell as Hangman. Lewis Pullman as Bob. I thought Bob was a great character. Bob, Bob was interesting, yeah, definitely. A little bit out of sorts, but it sort of probably fits the mould of what is going to be coming through in this day and age where there's not as much about the jocks and the dog fighting. I, might, I thought that was good. I don't think they had as bigger role as some of the secondary characters in the first movie. I'm um, like, yeah, mm-hmm. Hangman sort of was just bits and pieces sort of just trying to stir the pot and be a loud mouth, but didn't really have a big role. Um, no real backstory to him, but, um, you yeah, know, I thought they were pretty good. Uh, I thought Bob, they did Bob a great, was- they did a really good job of establishing Rooster and giving him yes a, a very fleshed out character. So I think if they do, yeah continue making Top Gun movies, they can have Rooster as the lead character. Yes. Yep. But I also like how they, the Rooster and like the rivalry between Rooster and Hangman was very Iceman right. Maverick yep. Yep. without yep. just rehashing it and doing it exactly the same way. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really liked that they introduced some female pilots as well with yep. Phoenix and Phoenix. a couple of the others in the background. You know, it seemed good. And they had a little good, good parts in it. Like they actually, yeah, got to get in there in that final scenes and be part of the team that's going in to attack the bombs, drop the bombs. 
Yep. Uh, um, what else did we get? I liked that they sort of had the way Maverick's character progresses. He's just the following on from what you said. He just wants to fly planes, and at the beginning, he's flying that crazy, yeah, stealth what, Mach Ten yeah. jet, and then yeah, it doesn't doesn't ease up. It has to push the boundaries, and yeah, just can't do it. And then crashes this multi-billion-dollar plane, and all right, well, we're sending you back to Top Gun, and you're going to be. An instructor and this is your last chance yeah and even then yeah when he sort of oh the bit yeah when he gets told he's out once ice man passes away he still just yeah does his own thing and i mean before it was yeah cool way to get him into it and show that he can push the limits and it was a good way to sort of like he was trying to get build that rapport with the students and was just struggling because yeah I think deep down he just wanted to do it himself but couldn't and yeah. then when they finally kick him out he's like right the only way that i can get back is to show that yes this is possible to do it this way and he does it and then that instantly gets the students on on his side like right we believe in everything he's saying now yeah definitely um and you know the scene the where the scene where um maverick flies that jet out on that uh test flight that he's not meant to be going on and flies over uh what's the character over Kane. Um, yeah Kane's over ed Kane. yeah ed harris's character flies over him you know how they are the roof of the security checkpoint pops off yep yep, yep. that that was not planned <laughs> that, that was all they had one take at that and that's the the shot they got and they're just like really? well we'll just run with it and <laughs> that roof yeah, was yeah, not meant to yeah. come off but we'll take it Wow. For it to come off and then drop back on and not be playing, that's, that's sick. Yeah, and like it, I think it works so much better too because it, it, just it works, gives like, a bit more impact to that scene. And I think like it sort of when he sort of buzzes a tower as well, I like that he buzzes a tower, but they didn't have to throw back to a spilt coffee moment like the original movie. Yep. Like I like that he still got to buzz the towers, but didn't they didn't have they didn't go the cheesy oh the guy spills his coffee all yeah. over himself again. There was apparently quite a few moments that weren't planned, like in this movie. In the the final sequence where Rooster goes, you know, they have to do the hop and then go into the dive straight away. When they were filming that, apparently his uh, straps were too loose. So when you watch it, he hits his head on the canopy and like gets kind of somewhat stunned. And that was just one of the shots they took. And that was the one they went with. They're like, oh, looks cool. Be amazing to see what sort of budget they had for the um flying the F-18s and the amount of filming that they actually did in them. Yeah, I saw an interview with Miles Teller. He said they uh they filmed more footage for this than uh, they filmed for either the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy or like the longest of the Lord of the Rings movies because they just had multiple cameras set up on these planes and they'd go out on. 90 minute to an hour flights and just have to record every second of that flight and the funny part is like some good because the obviously you can't have cameraman and directors climbing all over these yeah. crazy fa18s yeah. the actual actors had to get in the seat turn all the cameras on themselves yeah. make sure their makeup and hair and everything kind of sat okay and recorded all themselves and then the director just had to sit back at the the air base and hope that they got the shots that they wanted at the end <laughs> would have been an incredibly stressful movie to film as a director where you oh. just kind of you don't have your hands yeah. on it like it's totally hands off compared to normally like yeah, on a cut totally. let's well, let's redo gonna, that line and how people are going to deal with the g-force i saw an interview with um tom cruise when he was in a flight with someone one at one of the actual navy guys and apparently they've pulled some monster g's and he's gone to grab his vomit bag and throw up and as he's gone to throw up the guy's I don't know, flipped it pulled up <laughs> or done something and he's like compressed himself onto the ground like got compressed onto his seat because he was pulling oh. more g's and he was just like yeah just I, don't know, I definitely wouldn't be able to do it 
No, apparently the, all the actors went through is like some crazy training regime so that they could all be in the yeah. planes rather than in, in the last, the original. I think Tom Cruise is the only one that ever actually filmed in a flying plane. Like all the others were kind of just in seated planes. Yeah. So hectic that they all filmed yeah. in the planes and they were all flying like those super low flights. Oh, like yeah. Super scary. Yeah. But I think it pays off in... Like it feels the, really kinetic and feels really authentic. The image quality and the actual visual. They are. Is just really good. Yeah. They filmed on 6K IMAX cameras. So I wish we had like the old Sydney IMAX with the giant screen that we could have gone and seen this one. Yeah. It's been gone for ages. Really? Yep. There is, there's an IMAX screen in Sydney, but it's not the same size as the original one. Which is disappointing. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing on a bigger, better screen than the local cinema. Might be a... <laughs> yeah, the old Roxy with the, 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 the Roxy with the Spartan <laughs> Roman gods <laughs> next to the screen. Yeah, I think head up to like Sydney and go see it in like a gold yeah. class in gold the big class. cinema would be epic. Yeah, but I think I still enjoyed it. Like I still felt oh, yeah. like it was great watching the cinemas. I'm gonna, definitely going to rewatch it when it hits Paramount Plus again too. Yeah, yeah no, I'll be um, sitting down a few more times. I don't know how many times I've watched Top Gun one, so <laughs> yeah, same. It's beyond release as well. Um, it seems to have paid off though. Like, it had quite a few delays. Obviously, it was supposed to come out in what 2019 originally. It's now three years later, and we're finally getting it. Uh, it. I saw it just crossed seven hundred million dollars grossed yeah. since release. <laughs> no, it's yeah, a lot of money. Gonna be a big movie, and it's just know, it's gonna regenerate such an interest that people who didn't see the original in our age group have gone and seen the original now because people are talking about this new one, and they're gonna get hooked on it like I did thirty years ago or twenty years ago, whatever how long it was for me. Yep, I think it's yeah pay off and definitely worth the wait yeah and it had like it had another great soundtrack too like all the songs yeah. in it were yeah. there was I'll, obviously I'll, the ones that you expected but then there were some cool new ones as well that fit yeah. i like that it started with danger zone again i reckon I even the job. even that like a uh, text screen at the very start no it's exactly the same, yeah. it's the exact same as the first one I wouldn't have a job, but if I was in a movie cinema, I'd just like secretly for one session, put the original one and see how long it takes for people to realize that they're not watching the new one. It'd like, probably hey, take, yeah. it'd probably take, 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 a while, people. take a few minutes before people are like, yeah. wait a second. Oh. Yeah. Because yeah, you get, you get that opening yeah, text box, scene. then you get the music. You'd be like, okay, yeah, this is right. And then yeah. taken off on the boats and whatnot. And then, yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be yeah. funny to see, <laughs> see how long it took. Um, and like your dad said, when we walked out, the, uh, Mustang plane that is shown at the end and throughout the movie, that is actually Tom Cruise's plane. That is his plane? Yeah. That's the one he owns, that's which is cool. Yeah. Another yeah. cool little thing. Like, cool little, yeah. And shows that like, yeah, even though he filmed it 30 years ago, he still loves like his, it is him. It's not just the acting like. Yeah. Like he's like, a like, legitimate pilot that can fly all of these planes essentially which is crazy he's like super committed as an actor to doing oh, yeah. doing his own stunts apparently for this movie that was a requirement of him coming back that everybody got in the planes and filmed not just himself yeah no, he did i think he's definitely made the right choices for it didn't bring back a crappy sequel which there's been a few yeah. in the last few years yeah, especially yeah, thirty years after the original. Like there was, a, yeah. there was a lot of pressure riding on this movie to not ruin yeah. a lot of people's favorite movie of all time. Definitely. And like we said, with all the pilots being, or all the actors being in the planes themselves, apparently three out of the six actors threw up every single day. Oh. Which I can see, like some of the oh. moves and. Some of the stunts G's. and stuff they're doing would have been horrible. 
I wanted to be a pilot until I first went on anything that produced any form of G force, and then I threw up, and that was my dream to pilot out the window. <laughs> Just to up there, that there, there goes that that idea. Yeah, no chance. Now you could just become a drone pilot and you could fly it at home, sitting at your own desk. It's not the same. It's not the same. Yeah. That wouldn't be cool. Definitely doesn't not impress the lady being a drone pilot. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> they might just look at you like, oh, nerd. Yeah. So yeah, Top Gun, I highly recommend going and see it, even though we, we, we took our sweet time. It yeah. was definitely worth it. And, Roxy Definitely, Cinema yeah. fr Friday night got the hot tip. Cinema yeah. one. <laughs> Don't even need a ticket. We we bought tickets. We just can walk in and sit down. Literally, no one, no one, no one checking nothing. We, and the like that cinema entry number one is at the front yeah. before they even see you walk in. Don't have allocated seats. You just walk in and pick a seat. No one will know. Yeah. Oh, I That's wonder what. Every wonder Friday what we're seeing this week. <laughs> Friday, 6 p.m. every week. That's what movie we're going to. Whatever's in Cinema One. To be fair, we'll probably end up seeing Top Gun again this week, and then in a probably. in a couple of weeks, we'll finally get Jurassic Park. Yeah, I don't, don't think I want to see that one. Light year. Oh yeah, I'm super keen for that. That that actually that actually might be what's in Cinema One this weekend. Yeah, yeah, probably. Cause, yeah, it comes out this Thursday, doesn't it? Yeah, and school holidays are still on, aren't they? No. I think so. Yeah. You're the one with kids. No. I don't know. No, that's not until July. But isn't it the Queen's birthday long weekend this week? It's just a long weekend. No yeah. school holidays. No, you're the one with kids. That's your. That's that's a Adam issue, not me issue. So then the other movie we checked out, another brand new one this week, the new sports drama on Netflix, starring Adam Sandler as an NBA scout for the 76ers. Hustle, what did you think of that movie? I thought it was, it was pretty good. Um, a different take on an Adam Sandler movie. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't like traditionally, yeah, don't expect him in this sort of movie. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really good. I think it's uh, interesting because it's yeah, based on the 76ers and him being a scout and the politics around <laughs> some of his choices as well, um, which I thought was interesting with some of the drama that the 76ers have been having in the last few years with their <laughs> back office and coaching staff and picking players and seeming to destroy a lot of good players' careers. Um, or just letting, letting great players letting, slide. Letting, yeah, picking people over other people in the draft and they probably shouldn't. And yeah. So I think it was, you know, I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, probably for the highlight for me is Anthony Edwards. Um, I just, as a basketball player, I love him. And I dead set reckon his character would have been very unscripted. Some of the stuff that comes out of his mouth in the, <laughs> so he played, who's he play? Um, Kermit? Uh, Kermit movie. Will Washington. Yeah. Yeah. So he's the, the number one, the rival to the main character, Bo. Yep. Um, and trash talk that he does i reckon would have just been all ant like it's just seeing the way he plays and i just reckon it would mean him coming up with his normal trash talk that he does when he plays i just thought it was really interesting and cool yeah like i really enjoyed this movie um you hadn't seen uncut gems before seeing this had you no 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 still yeah. haven't seen it yet okay so that's why this came as quite a big tonal shift in yeah. terms of Adam Sandler movies for you, because I assume the last one you see him was probably like Deuce Bigelow or something like that. Oh, I'd be like, yeah. I know, the Billy one Madison or something? Yeah, that, that to me, the Adam Sandler movies are, yeah, Billy Madison. Um, wow, well, I can't even remember the name, the golf one. Uh, like, yeah. Happy Gilmore. Not, Happy Gilmore, that's it. Yeah, yeah that, that's like those sort of movies. Um, and yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Adam Sandler movies in the last couple of years. And it's just yes. like, yeah. So to see serious. this one, see this one, take a more serious tone with, there are still funny elements in this one, oh, yeah. but definitely, it's definitely not a comedy. It's more of a, a, a drama. drama. Yeah. But for me, having seen Uncut Gems, this was kind of, this was 
still a tonal shift, but not as strong because Uncut Gems is very dramatic and it's all about a basically a jewel, a diamond dealer or something. And he has like this crazy um, gambling addiction on NBA. So it's all about him like borrowing money from the mob and then gambling and then hoping he makes enough to cover his debts and it's like a super stressful watch whereas this was definitely more light-hearted family friendly happy go lucky like sports movie yeah um, which and i really enjoyed like, uh, yeah and adam sandler is a like, nba super fan so it's good that he's sort of bringing in his passions a little bit um, i feel i feel like this is yeah just him like wanting to hang out with dr oh, j and lebron oh, and all of those all the players and it's like let's just make a movie about it and yeah. i'll star in it and get to hang out with all these guys and it's working yeah and i find it interesting like based in philly but there was such a limited philly players as well like there was mm -hmm. like obviously dr j from the past but um like there was the only matisse and to tobias harris who else was there yeah. from philly seth, seth curry back when he was a philly player it wasn't like, but there was a seem to be a lot of other NBA players from. Yeah, they got they got players from all around yeah. the country. Like, yeah. like we said, uh, Bo Cruz, the main character, is played by yeah. uh, Hernan Gomez yeah, from the Utah player. Jazz. Anthony Edwards is uh, plays Kermit. Uh, they got the the NBA commentator Kenny Smith to play Leon Rich, yeah. which was cool. Yeah. Yep. And then in terms of cameos, we've got Trey Young, Jordan Clarkson, Chris Middleton, Aaron Gordon, Kyle Lowry, Seth Curry, Luka Doncic was a cool one. Like yep. yeah, Luke, just yeah, him Luke. basically doing like a, an Instagram Between live thing. It was. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Dirk. Tyrese, Tyrese Maxey, Matisse Tybal, Julius Irving, Charles Barkley, Shaq, Allen Iverson, Dirk Nowitzki. Basically, just doing a cool. FaceTime call. That was a cool one. Yeah, I reckon a bit of Adam Sandler just want to be like, yeah, I'm mates with this guy. Like, <laughs> if I was in his circle, I'd probably be calling random famous people as well just for a chat, just to show yep. that I can have it. Uh, Doc Rivers was in there as well. And then yeah. I, th I think one of my favorite ones was Boban yeah, Marjanovic yeah. just playing, playing a 22 year old well, Russian. Didn't even have, didn't have a big Serbian, wasn't it? Didn't even have a name. He was just referred to as yeah, big Serbian. The, the like big that. Serbian. That's right. In the credits, just says big Serbian. I think that was really good. He is a good looking I man, feel, Boban. I feel like that echoed like everyone's thoughts when he like made his debut for the Spurs. Yeah. Everyone's like, yeah. how old is this guy? Yeah, how old? And we're like, where did he come from? Like, just... And then, yeah, his, his 10 year old son that looked about yeah. 28. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then no, they yeah. also they also got the street ballers in there as well. That was another cool yeah. like little yeah. element. Yeah, you got a good mix of players and uh, anyway, I find it interesting like why some got to be play themselves and then mm -hmm. others had to play someone else, play play a character. Like yeah. And I still it, yeah. it will it wasn't just like the gigantic players like Dirk and Luka Doncic that were themselves like it was yeah. random guys were themselves yeah. and then others that were big stars were like a character yeah. it was strange but cool you know definitely good it's always good to mm. see Shaq in a movie best basketball movie in the last 12 months 18 months better acting he, than Space Jam oh yeah definitely definitely better acting than Space Jam um, I don't know if I was an NBA player I would have preferred to be in that one than Space Jam I was surprised like LeBron has is like listed as a producer. But um oh, Yeah, he didn't actually pop up in the movie, which was a bit of a surprise. I wonder if that was just like a might have been a contracting issue with yeah, Universal yeah. or whatever. I think it was Universal or Warner Brothers or someone that did Space Jam where he couldn't appear in another company's movie for X amount of time or something. But I didn't yeah. realize that. 
yeah, so probably. yeah, he's def probably helped get a lot of these guys yeah. signed on to play parts in the movie. Um, but yeah, like it, it does a great job of yeah giving you that insight into the turmoil, turmoil at the 76ers. Like I saw a tweet the other day when the uh, Celtics are in the finals at the moment. One of the tweets was the 76ers could have had four yeah. or five of the players that are now on the Celtics yeah, they, in the finals. They would have been able to have Jason Tatum, but they took Mark Hill, Fultz. Mm -hmm. They would have been able to have Smart. Mm -hmm. Did they take over Smart? Probably Ben Simmons. Yeah. yeah they, I, they would have I can't remember. Yeah, it was just a tweet that just had like, it listed four or five of the Celtics players that... They had had our Horford for a couple of seasons and just might as well have paid him a lot of money for nothing. Mm, it paid him to play for the Celtics, essentially. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like, this is, yeah, as a Netflix movie, really well done. Like, I yeah. didn't have... Yeah. After Uncut Gems, I was expecting really good things and I was expecting it to be more closely aligned with that in terms of a tense, serious movie, but, like, I really enjoyed the, the little twist of, yeah, it's a serious drama, but it's got funny yeah. elements in there. Yeah, and funny. Yeah. It just has that, that classic sports drama movie where it builds up and you think that they're, they're finally going to achieve their dream and yeah. then there's a hurdle yeah. and then yeah. training yeah, montage pretty, back to great stuff. Still a bit predictable at the end, but um, I think still, yeah, very good. Very well done. Uh, in terms of, ah, oh, in terms of some of the trivia I found, the, obviously the main character Bo in the movie is Spanish. Apparently the f original script, he was supposed to be Chinese, <laughs> but then, uh, due to pressure from Netflix, they were asked to change that because Netflix doesn't oh, really? do business in China. China? So they were like, were can, they we, they can we change that please? <laughs> Yeah, they definitely yeah. couldn't have got Hernan Gomez to play Bo yeah. as a random Chinese dude. Yeah. So, nice little change, but I think it worked. probably worked out better in terms of... Yeah, and I think like, the whole lead up being over in that Europe and trying to find that next yeah, big thing. I can't it's imagine sort of... there's a ton of scouts for the NBA, yeah. China um, and well, Asia in general. Yeah, you look at the NBA, the big players at the moment are all from Europe. Yeah. Novak, not Novak, that's tennis. The Joker. <laughs> yeah. Um, Doncic. Like they're all Giannis, they're all Europe based. That's where they're getting all these superstars from at the moment. So, yeah, so it definitely makes more sense. Like yeah. I think the only reason they would have made it a Chinese character would have been to try and get Chinese investment. But that's what that's where the NBA wants to head to because that's where the money is. Yeah, but then, yeah, obviously it wouldn't have been a Netflix movie if that was the case. It would have been on some other random streaming service and the quality would probably would have been much lower. Yeah. Uh, in terms of your top recommendation for the week, which one would you pick out of these two movies? I think for me, Top Gun. Um, it's, yeah, such a... It's going to be an iconic movie, I reckon. Um, it's going to be a movie that if you're in your group of friends talking about a movie and you haven't seen it, people will give you crap because it's, uh, that's uh, what Top Gun was um, sort of from our group. If there's anyone ever, someone who hadn't seen Top Gun, they're always that weird little kid in the corner. Um, yeah. Yeah. You look at someone like, why, why have you not seen it? Like, how have you not seen it's this? like not seeing the Lion King or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what this one's going to be. Um, yeah. It'll be a movie that. People will still be watching in a few years' time. So I think it's definitely one that would be worth seeing at the cinemas, especially because it's such a good bit of footage on the big screen and the sound is so good. Yeah, I'm I'm super happy we went and saw it at the movies rather than waiting for it to hit a streaming service. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna rewatch it when it hits Paramount, but I think yeah, if you can get out and see it before it leaves the cinemas. With the big sound systems and that, it just 
makes you feel like you're there with the jets all around. And yeah, definitely. I think that would be my pick of the movies. I'm a little jealous. We don't have 4d cinemas like they have in America at the moment. Like this movie is playing in 4d cinemas in the U S and I think that would be, that'd be a hell of an experience. So you get the 3d goggles, obviously. So you get the 3d, but then your seat moves and rumbles. It it blows like wind and stuff on you. I was like, yeah, that, that sounds like it'd be a hell of an experience. That'd be cool. This movie. And like I said, I think it will be one that stands a test of time because it is all actual in-camera footage. There's no, no like crazy CGI and weird effects like that. It's it's not going to age terribly in five years' time. Look back on it like some of these other CGI movies. Like, oh, that looks horrible. Whereas this, that looks horrible now. That, yeah, this one, like the original, is going to look good for a long time. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, Top Gun for me as well. Alrighty. Thank you everyone for listening to the commentary booth. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on podcast services and on YouTube. You can follow Adam on Instagram at freedom.advisory for all of your accounting tips. And you can follow me on social media at Jamie Apps Media and at Pario Magazine. Thanks for coming on the show and we will catch you around the bend later. Thanks, App App Study. The Commentary Booth is a fan-funded production of Jamie Apps Media. You can support the podcast alongside our magazine, Pario Magazine, on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Jamie Apps Media. The following people supported at the community support group level or higher, and you cannot fathom how incredibly appreciative we are for their support. Brian and June Hart, Blake Robinson, Rena Renee, Courtney Paulson, Darren Hatcliffe, Jackson Carr, and Tracy Apps.